Many people today have dilemmas with how society operates. They grasp the fact that something is wrong, although they might not understand the roots of what is truly causing the problem. This is because it is often hard to see something that is the opposite of the environment in which we are raised and conditioned. In some cases, individuals latch onto the political system in a grave hope of trying to bring about a better system. The question we must ask is, what is this system? What are these people contributing to and enabling? The answer? Statism. The definition of statism from Merriam-Webster. Concentration of economic controls and planning in the hands of a highly centralized government often extending to government ownership of industry. Statism is a political philosophy describing political movements which support the use of the state to achieve goals. Hence, statism is political ownership and control and the belief that the government can achieve goals it deems necessary. I personally can't remember a time when someone came up to me and said, Mike, damn homeless people, or I want unsafe neighborhoods, or I want unclean facilities, or I want to have rampant drug use and addiction. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is empirically tested, but I think you would agree that most people want to help the homeless, cure the sick, feed the starving, make sure the old are taken care of, create peace, and breed more prosperity. The question then asked, how are these preferences enforced through statism, a system of political ownership, and the belief that goals can be achieved through government? The government produces nothing at a marginal gain when compared to the free market, which is not what we have today. The government doesn't have its own revenue source, it's not self-sufficient. So where did the oligarchs and politicians get the money to achieve these goals. When the pathogenic parasitical bureaucrats we call politicians want money, they must extort it from the population. These men write up nice documents, laws, that make it sound as if their actions are morally justifiable. They hire men to steal for them and even portray the job as heroic. This is, of course, not voluntary funding. You do not have an option on whether to fund their pyramid scheme or not. The more laws, the more you must pay. If you break one of the tens of thousands of arbitrary and imaginary rules of their protectionist trade regulations, they will send you a fine, a penalty. Much like Al Capone, if you do not pay this penalty, this threat, they will send their hired mercenaries to kidnap you and hold you in a cage, which requires more taxation theft to cover the costs. In these cages, the guards and political prisoners will share in the torture, this unneeded torture. If you try to protect and defend your family against this intrusion, you will be massacred like pigs at a slaughterhouse. After all the dust clears, a few things become certain. Every law in adult statist society is a gun. Every single law is a threat towards the initiation of violence. And the guns are everywhere. We can now see things for how they truly are. Taxation is theft. Prohibitions and victimless crimes as domestic wars, lobbying as bribery, regulations as protectionist legislation for corporate lobbyists, war as murder, statism as terrorism, statism as slavery. It's not as if the government can feed every child. No one donates to welfare because they have been extremely pleased with the results. They simply give what they have to to stay out of jail. Why is this? because they know that they would rather take their money and give it to a private charity, as private as anything can be in this status system, because they know that the money will be spent more efficiently than through the bureaucratic black hole. When we were kids, we were instructed not to hit, not to steal, to respect others, 
great principles that should be adhered to more often. Once we grow up, though, things seem to change. Statism, what most adults consider reality today, is nothing but hitting and pushing, stealing, kicking, screaming, threatening, and, well, you get the picture. Many people believe that because government currently claims monopolies in certain facilities, that this is how it is supposed to be, that there is some altruism at work, which couldn't be farther from the truth. Although the Enlightenment and Industrial Eras discarded most taboos and spells, many people still cling to magical powers and sorcery. They believe that if enough people can wish something true, that it becomes true. That politician pinstrokes have magical abilities that rise above other pins and pencils. Who are these people that still cling to this voodoo? <laughs> They're not all wizards, witches, and magicians. Unfortunately, many of them are politicians, oligarchs, bureaucrats, kings, congressmen, senators, presidents, and voters. They believe that just to call something the Social Security Act is to actually give people social security. They believe that writing up a document can end starvation, that creating laws can end homelessness or stop hard drug abuse, that pieces of parchment paper can stop oligarchs or protect the unborn. They never see the gun. They are inevitably pointing at everyone else, including themselves. If you don't want to fund abortion clinics, you go to jail. If you don't want to arrest peaceful people for the wrong type of vegetation in their pocket, they arrest you. If you don't want to fund torture, they throw you in a cage. If you don't want to fund needless and inhumane, murderous wars overseas, you go to prison. Are you beginning to see the ranch you were born into? A ranch where a majority of your peers believe in government alchemy to relieve their narcissist withdrawals. The thing is, there is no magic. Politicians don't have magic pin strokes, they don't have magic wands just guns and the men to enforce their whims in many cases without questioning where their masters derive their power there is no difference between statism and a bully they both have the same means and the same goal they both use coercion to get what they want for themselves the non-aggression principle dictates that people should have the right to do whatever they want as long as they don't infringe on the rights of others where there is no victim, there is no crime. Statism is nothing but the infringement of others who simply disagree. Most people believe anarchy is chaos, although I can find nothing more chaotic than ubiquitous suitable conduct being determined by political whim. If I took away your right to determine what you eat every day, you would soon be asking for your food anarchy back. Oh, I know. <laughs> it sounds scary. How dare we trust people to satisfy their own taste buds as they want? <laughs> as you can see, this is simply silly. Individuals calling for anarchy have the same aims as those who support statism, that is. They want peace and prosperity. The difference? They simply want to control their own lives, rather than dump their responsibilities on the violent, and tyrannous political system. Statism is a dilapidated system we inherited from cavemen. Quickly, think back to chain slavery just 170 years ago. It's not as if slavery could be reformed. Can you imagine yourself pushing for less slavery back then? Of course not! You would call for its total abolishment. Statism is slavery and statism must be completely abolished. Once you see the system for what it is, there is no way a virtuous person can ever go back.